my name is uh, Davide Capodanno, I'm an interventional cardiologist uh, working in Catania, Italy, and today I'm at ESC 2015 in uh, London uh, together with Dr. Claire Bouletti from the Hôpital Bichat Paris in France. And uh, we will discuss about one of the abstracts that you have presented here at the uh, course, which is about uh, percutaneous approach in failed uh, uh, tricuspid surgery. So my first question is about uh, uh, why, why this interest in the tricuspid valve and uh, what was your approach? Okay, thanks. So we know that uh, severe tricuspid disease has a negative clinical impact on its own. And um, the guidelines are now in favor of uh, combined tricuspid surgery in case of left-sided heart uh, valve surgery. So with the increase of tricuspid surgery, we also have a number of patients who present with a late prostatic deterioration over time. And for example, we have about 20% of reoperation uh, during the 10 years following tricuspid surgery with a um, bioprosthetic valve replacement or tricuspid repair. And we know that we do uh, tricuspid surgery may be high risk or even contraindicated due to uh, patients' comorbidities. So in this context, and given the recent breakthrough of uh, percutaneous treatments in mitral or aortic diseases, the tricuspid valve appeared as an appealing challenge. And um, so, yeah, today I was presenting uh, uh, an abstract about valve-in-valve -valve and valve-in-wing implantation using the transfemoral approach. This was for degenerated bioprosthesis or a failed wing annuloplasty. Today, we will talk only about Edward Sapien valve, but we have to know that um, there is another valve that can be implanted in the, the tricuspid valve uh, that is called the Melody valve. And both the Melody and the Sapien valve seem to have good results uh, in our tricuspid transcatheter heart valve implantation. So let's talk about results. Uh, how many patients uh, did you treat for this uh, study and uh, what were the outcomes? Um, in fact, we reported the results of uh, six consecutive patients that were referred to our institution, Bishop Hospital, between uh, 2011 and 2013. For three of them, uh, it was a degenerated bioprosthesis, and for the three of us, a uh, failed wing annuloplasty. So we performed three valve in valve and three valve in wing implantations mm -hmm. because, um, of course, all patients were. Uh, highly symptomatic in NYHA class 3 or 4, and they were considered at extremely high risk or contraindicated to surgery with uh, five out of six uh, that were already, um, that already had uh, at least two interventions. And so the heart team um, referred them for percutaneous treatments. And uh, all the procedures were performed um, under general anesthesia and the TEE guidance and with a transfemoral approach. And uh, the prosthesis was deployed uh, under rapid ventricular pacing to avoid for unwanted devices movement. And the results are for procedural success, we had what, uh, three procedural success for valve in valve implantations and only two out of three for uh, valve in wing implantations because of one um, residual CV paravalvular leak <laughs> that, that occurred at the open portion of the wing. And do you have also long-term follow-up for these patients? Yeah, we are all patients at uh, one year clinical and echocardiographic follow-up and the survival rate was 100 persons at one year and um, the tricuspid gradient remained stable as well as the tricuspid regurgitation grades. And only one patient was in uh, NYC class 3 at one year follow up uh, due to uh, severe white ventricular di dysfunction. And so all the other patients were in, were in NYC class 1 or 2, uh, which illustrates the sustained good functional results of these procedures. And of course, this was a compassionate use. So can you tell us something about the uh, patient, the candidates for this uh, procedure? Yeah. Um, of course, valve in valve and valve wing implantation in the tricuspid position are very new percutaneous treatments that are currently limited to extremely high-risk patients uh, after evaluation by the heart team. And we have, in fact, two uh, different populations that uh, could have this kind of uh, procedures. 
Uh, on one side, you have young patients with congenital heart diseases that were already operated on several times. And on the other, you have older patients with uh, acquired valve diseases uh, and comorbidities. So in our series, it was only adult patients. Mm -hmm. Okay, so looks a very promising and interesting uh, procedure. Of course, uh, it's uh, still limited in uh, its application. And hopefully, new percutaneous uh, system uh, more uh, suited for the tricuspid anatomy will be developed in the future. So I thank you for sharing some time uh, with us. Uh, and I thank you, our viewers, for watching this video. Thank you. Thank you.